Hello YouTube, my name's James. I'm here today with Gareth and John and we're here for our final part of our ultimate smartphone test. Now we've already tested camera, we've already tested battery and we've already tested speed. And today we're gonna have a look at those videos, have a look at some of your comments and see what you all thought of it and kind of do a breakdown of what we thought was the ultimate smartphone from that test. Now we took the iPhone 6S, the Sony Xperia Z5, the LG G5, the HTC 10, the Huawei P9 and the Samsung Galaxy S7. We tested all six of these phones, what we consider to be some of the best phones in the world right now and we ran through those three different tests so let's start off with speed. So the iPhone 6S won our speed test in boot up time and without boot up time. What do you guys think? Were you surprised? No, not at all. I mean I think if the uh if you look at basically what's going on, the iPhone itself has got integrated architecture, it's got its own operating system, it's got its uh, own hardware. So it knows, you know, Apple knows exactly what they're doing when they're putting together the phone. Mm. From top to bottom, it's all optimized, so it makes perfect sense that it would win this test. Right, so boot up time. Now, this is one of the most controversial things we do in our speed test. We usually get quite a few comments saying that we shouldn't include boot up times. Why do we do it? Well, I think it's, it's pretty easy. I mean, I completely understand that people say that there's no point in boot up time, you don't put up your phones every day. That's true, fine. But we can't test a phone over a whole single day. We can't do it and time it and do every single part and take an aggregate time. It's just not possible. So what we need to do is artificially introduce those parts that force the processors to work hard. Mm -hmm. Show them their, show their true colors, basically. Because there's times when you know, you'll jump from one up to another to the camera in the day and it won't work and the next time it will. And we really need to find out exactly how hard these phones mm -hmm. can work. Booting up a phone from dead means it has to compile all the apps. It has to really work hard to get a connection as fast as possible. So doing this will show you exactly how fast this phone is under stress. And under stress is when you really find out how good the phone is. Yeah, we could do it so it just it ran them in normal conditions and, and maybe that will help. But it, won't, it will never give you the exact performance that you'll have mm -hmm. with the phone day to day because we just can't replicate that. So what we need to do is show what's got the most potential, what's got the most optimization. And, and you know, doing it from boot up means that the phone is coming in from fresh. It's having its first go at everything. And if it could do it well, it can do it well throughout. One of the comments from Yogi Mega One True Nyangu uh, said, "Geez, you refresh." Why, why say the right name? I mean, just, <laughs> G just go for it, really. He said, "Geez, you refresh Instagram four times on the HC10. It's very unfair. It should be less than that." Well, I mean, that's it. Should be less than that. That's the point. But these phones are all done under exactly the same conditions. They connect to the same router, and it's not like we don't just do these tests once. We no. do these. We did it four times. And again, this goes back to our original point. If the phone can't connect to the internet from the off so quickly, it has to wait, it has to wait. We, say this, we see the same thing with Spotify on certain, different, on certain phones. It just can't, for some reason, the same app, you know, in Android, different phones, it just can't connect as, as fast as possible. And these are the things that matter because, you know what, with the HTC, that means that sometimes you go in and out of internet connection. I can't, I can't refresh Instagram. That's it's a key part of, yep. the, of the speed test because it shows in real terms, these are the things it struggles with. Maybe it won't happen to you. Maybe you'll go the entire life with never happening. But again, it shows the potential of issues mm. or speed that could happen so yeah i completely agree it's really annoying and that's why we rerun these tests to make sure it wasn't just anomaly like the intense router dropped that one time but it happened every time it's what hc does therefore it needs to be optimized and it needs to be shown yeah that's very important definitely so one of the other things that commenters have addressed is software updates now mohammed abra hussein ador think i got that right sorry if i didn't uh he said please do the speed test again after the htc is released perfectly i mean it's a new phone so there must be some glitch in the phone so after it's released perfectly it will have more software updates but the thing is the phone that we ran the speed test on was the phone running final software a software that you could go out and if you bought the phone at the time that's the software you'd get so it's a fair test because this isn't this isn't pre-production software this is software which has landed on the phone and they've put into stores that you can buy so yeah i think it's a, it's a really good point about phones in general i mean we love I mean, we love phones we want them to be as good as they can be but you know same with games consoles i mean people think let's just release something and then we'll fix it on the fly and especially with a phone when you've got to spend so much money on it you're thinking well first impressions are really important so if it doesn't go great gun straight away then it's kind of a dangerous game playing but again yeah we play with the hdc software it doesn't seem to make a huge amount of difference mm. but i'll be interested to see what happens with the speed test when it changes and or if it changes Cool. Uh, so this doesn't come down to speed exactly, but we've had a few comments asking why we don't have the Nexus 6P and some other people have also asked for Windows. So Carcavel a shock said flagship model Lumia 950 is not here. Windows beats Apple easily. How do you feel? Does it? Yeah. Does win? I mean, I... Everyone's got their own opinions on phones and, you know, it's great that everyone has their own kind of tribes with different phone manufacturers and operating systems, but... You know, there's no point in putting them on the test because it's not representative. We can only have so many phones in here. And as soon as we put a Windows phone in, everyone's wondering why haven't you got all these other brilliant phones on the market yeah. at the moment? I mean, in terms of the Nexus 6P, John? The Nexus 6P is an interesting one. 
and it is sort of vying into a fabric uh, sort of territory. Where, and we're gonna we're gonna do a fabric roundup. We're gonna get all the big phones in and, and put those all through their places. Mate eight, Nexus six P, another big phone, six S plus maybe. Three Who knows? Phones, yeah. Three other big Seven phones. Edge. Yeah, we'll, we'll probably figure some of them as we come. But yeah, <laughs> it'll be great. But yeah, so the 6P will be featuring it. It's gonna, we're saving it though for our phablets test. And also there was another point as well, because we did think about, you know, we only have six spaces for this. And we thought, well, there's already a Huawei in there because we've got the, the new P9. And there's a lot of similar software, a lot of similar hardware as well. So it wouldn't have made a lot of sense to have both together. But we really do appreciate that people are so passionate about different ones. You know, one of our staff members has just bought the 6P and they love it. So it will definitely be in there soon. Which test will stand to be seen? Cool. So let's move on to the battery test. Now, were you surprised by the results here? So the HTC 10 came out on top with 56%, the only one over 50% of his battery left over. The test we ran was a two hour web script, kept running through a few of our favorite websites. Uh, the Samsung Galaxy S7 came just behind it with 48%, and the iPhone 6S got absolutely rinsed at 22%. Yeah. Were you surprised? There was some surprising and some non-surprising results in that, let's be honest. Uh, we knew from our in-depth review that the S7 battery was good and, it's, and the result here has shown it. HTC 10 is one of the real big surprises. It didn't do so well during our long review. We had it for a good two weeks and it would struggle really to see it a whole day on just sort of moderate usage. Well, yeah. Whereas this, I mean, this is a very specific yeah. test though. Yeah, I mean, in terms of, I'd say probably there's a bit harsh in HTC 10. I'd say it... it it struggled to go through the whole day on quite hard usage. It was much better than before. You know, the HTC M9, it would definitely struggle for a whole day on just basically doing nothing. I see. I'd like. To, I mean, I love the battery test. You know, this is the second one we do. We also do the uh, the looping full HD video at full brightness, um, and the results are very different. With that one, we had the LG G5 doing spectacularly well because it's really good at media. With this one, I think the, you know the web browsing especially shows what it's like in real life because it uses the processor, it uses the screen, it does a lot of different commands all at once, and it's pulling down from data as well. So this is a really good example. So in a similar vein to that, one of our commenters, Jamie Bond, said, "Baloney test. In the real world, your phone screen is off." slash locked far more than it is on and being used. It's what happens during this downtime that determines if your phone will last through the day. Is there really a way to test that for our YouTube audience? Firstly, great use of the word baloney. Yeah, I appreciate that. Classic, thanks Bondi Beach. That's your new nickname. Um, no, not really for the YouTube audience. I mean, if you read our reviews, we do test this every day, every time. You know, we use the phone for two weeks. We'll test, you know, the phone in motion, you know, running, or we'll just leave it in the pocket sometimes or on the desk. And we use the phones at low usage, moderate usage, high usage, to get a real feel across the board of the different usage types of how the battery is lasting to give you a much fuller picture. And that's one that's a bit more difficult to show on video. Have a look at our reviews and it gives you a far more detailed breakdown. So Shane Tom in our comments did ask for a gaming battery test and he also wanted us to check heat yes. afterwards. Is that something we're going to look at doing? Yeah, absolutely. I think heat is a really important part of it. I mean, it's not as big as a big problem as it was before. I mean, yeah. we used to have, I think the iPad 2, was it? They used to just yeah. blaze up. So <laughs> I haven't had, we haven't had anything like that for a while. And handsets with the old Snapdragon 810 had a little yeah. bit of an issue as well. Lol. Lol. But <laughs> no, heat-wise, everything's improved. The technology, the processors, the cooling of the chipset yeah. and the motherboards have much improved inside our phones. So yeah. But I think gaming battery test is a brilliant idea as well because that's the, the big sucker. And things like uh, the Galaxy S7 promise and the HTC 10 promise to be able to reduce the battery life in that by you know reducing the resolution, stuff like that. So yeah, definitely a good test. And let us know which games you'd like us to see tested as well and uh, we'll give them a crack. Yeah. Uh, so one of our other commenters, Pierre Gallone, I think I've said that right. Sorry if I didn't. Probably not. <laughs> he said, great video, but you guys should really t try and test all the phones with the same screen brightness. Did we do that? John? Well, no, <laughs> is the short answer. Yeah. We, we put full brightness on every phone. Now, screen brightness is another interesting sort of misnomer about smartphone displays, different screen types, different screen technologies, and different ways manufacturers sort of interpret the screen brightness and how they sort of sometimes manufacture additional brightness with that. So it is something which is quite hard to judge and then get a level playing field across the board. Yeah, I think that, um, we did try this for about, I think it took about two months of my time trying to work out if we could get some calibration tools that would tell us exactly the same brightness for every phone. Super AMOLED screens on Samsung phones have a different perception of brightness. They will actually fire a lot lower in terms of brightness, but if you show them to two people, they'll say, well, that's the brighter phone because the contrast ratios are so much different and the blacks are blacker, the whites are whiter. It gives a different perception. You've also got the fact that if the phone's not viewed straight on, 
uh, and people, you know, you think you look at your phone straight on, you actually are generally tilting it a little bit, then the brightness changes anyway. So basically, it's as bright as the screen will go because that's also a really good test for outdoor viewing. Uh, and we, we pushed the battery at that point. And it's, the, it's the best we can do in terms of making it fair. And we've also had a few commenters point out that the screen resolutions are all different on all these phones and they don't think that's a fair test for that reason. I do think it's a fair test. What do you guys think? And I mean, it's, it's interesting to know this, like the 4K screen on the Sony Xperia Z5 Premium, got to get that out, um, most of the time isn't actually 4K. It's yeah. it's dialed down to, I think sometimes actually 1080p sometimes yeah. just to make sure that, because you know, if you're browsing the internet, actually the browsing internet, I think it's QHD, but some parts of it, it doesn't need the full screen resolution. So it dials it down. Same with, as we mentioned before, with gaming. So yeah. the Samsung Galaxy S7, S7 Edge, HC10 will all drop down to 1080p for games that don't need all those pixels. Unless, but, unless you force it on. Oh, yeah, exactly. You can. It is good, yeah. yeah, it's good to have the choice, but you know that's just visuals and it might not impact your gameplay but the key thing is that it doesn't matter what the resolution is it's the actual performance and we've actually got the skew the other way you'd think the iphone would do better because it's got so few pixels to drive and the and hdc the screen yeah and the hdc well technically it's the amount of pixels to drive not yeah. the size of the screen but the hdc's got the most or yeah the most on the test joint most and it was the best on battery so if anything it makes less sense Cool. And finally, let's talk about our camera test. Now, we took all six of these phones and took the same image which, with each of them. We did low light, we did landscape, we did video for selfie and the back camera. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Wide ranging question. Um, first of all, why did we do the video selfie? I was, I was interested to see that. Why did you think that was a, a good idea to do? Because people use this for Skype, they use it for FaceTime, they use it for that kind of thing. So the thing is with the camera test, this all comes down to personal preference really, doesn't it? You're going to look at these images, everyone's going to see them a little bit differently. Uh, what do you think, what phones do you think came out on top personally? Uh, well, for me, the Galaxy S7, I think, just took it. It wasn't, as, if, if you look at our review, the Galaxy S7 does some really great pictures. And I think overall, it's the best camera phone out there. It, um, maybe it's not as natural as some of the phones, but I think it does look, it looks really good on the screen, what it takes. In the actual test itself, I don't think the Samsung Galaxy S7 covered itself as much glory as it could have done, um, which I think is a really good example of, you know, you can put these phones in separate tests. And while I think low light, Samsung definitely did really well and considering how many phones on the market right now say we're really great at low light i'm surprised at how bad some of them were in that test absolutely and we used auto mode some people were like oh you know why aren't you using the pro mode right so there are the pro modes they're far more in depth and actually they're less popular for everyday snappers of phones there's always going to be people who love tampering with the settings and these phones most of them, bar the iPhone really, have great manual pro you modes. You can get a good app like the iPhone as well. You can, you absolutely, but that gives you that tinkering. But a lot of people just pull their phone out, they want to take a great picture first time, no messing about, because sometimes you don't have the time to load up pro mode, go into white balance, change the contrast, because the moment's passed. You need to have that instant great shot. So that's why we stuck with auto mode in this test, just to see how good these cameras are when they're instantly fired up and we just snap a photo. Yeah. I think the same thing. I mean, we really want, every time we review a phone, we want to take the best photos we can, both for someone who just, like I said, an instant snap, see what it looks like, and also just to show that we know what we're talking about and that we can actually review a phone in different scenarios. And I think it's exactly right with the pro mode. It's what the things that annoys me most about the HTC 10, for instance. The actual normal auto camera is nowhere near as good as it can be in pro mode. I think it's sort of the same with the Xperia Z5, but you have to really work at it. And, you know, and that would start to really, really piss people off with the phone if they have to yeah. keep going into different modes. It's much slower. It's much much more time intensive and yeah after a while you might get used to it um but you're right the auto mode is the most important thing which is why i think the sony xperia z5 is so disappointing on this test it's the third time sony's told me that this phone is is just amazing and each time it's just so unimpressive in auto yeah you can take some really great technically brilliant photos the autofocus is good in certain scenarios but it's never it should just look great in the, every single one of those tests, shouldn't it? It yep. should just be brilliant. So looking over these three different tests, I've been kind of surprised by how well the Samsung Galaxy S7 has done, but also hasn't really won out on any of the tests. It hasn't come number one in speed or battery. And personally, I'm not even sure if it came first in the camera test, but it's consistently done well. We thought it was going to do really well on battery, but it didn't really do as well as the HTC 10. Was there anything that really surprised you guys? Um, well, you've used the Huawei P9 and you know, you've seen a lot more what it's about. So was, did that do well for you? It did do well and it just shows how far Huawei have come over the past few years. They're a company that are gaining ground on the sort of big names of the mobile market more and more these days. And it, they are making positive strides. Are they quite there at the sort of upper echelons just yet? Not quite, but they are definitely gaining pace. And it's, it just shows it, it's a relatively solid performer in all the tests. So that's good work from Huawei. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say the only thing that really surprised me out of all the tests was that there wasn't any phone that did terribly. Um, I mean, 
I, you can still say I still think the iPhone should have done way better on the battery test. People say historically iPhones are bad at battery, yeah. but in the last couple of years it's really improved. And again, it shows there's still those kind of fragilities there. But essentially, yeah, none of these are bad. I mean, yeah, exactly. It comes well. back. These are all flagship phones. These aren't sort of a, a phone you're going to pick up in a bargain bin at your local retailer just because you need something to take to a festival and get muddy. These are high priced phones so you're paying for the best technology so you'd expect them to perform and they all do perform you can't pick up any of these and be ultimately disappointed yeah. um if you're looking for the best though probably the s7 as an all-round package yeah now we've got a lot more tests to come be sure to comment below and give us a few ideas of what you'd really like to see us put these phones through and other phones that you want to see we know you want the nexus 6p we know you probably want a windows phone as well we're not sure if we're actually going to do that yet though we're going to look into that Thanks for watching, thanks for liking, and thanks for subscribing. See you again soon.